Hello everyone, my name is Yogesh. Today's lecture is second part of previous lecture where I have explained you how you can pass parameter to a run, uh, already running application using web API. Means how you can create a single instance application where you can pass parameter at runtime using Z -sharp. Now in previous lecture I have used web API as an example to create that one in which web API will run in the separate thread and the UI will be a separate thread and through web API you will be able to communicate with the application. So how that application was done just to revise in that if your application is already running then your application first detect whether I am already running or not if it is already running one process then it will pass the current parameter to that process and close itself so there will be only single instance. Now same thing you can achieve through other two approaches one is using memory map file and second is using event viewer logs. Now the problem is uh, with web API you need to run your process as administrator Second, when the UI, uh, you can say web API run is a separate thread, controlling UI becomes a little bit difficult. Okay, so now with this memory map file and event viewer logs, we will be able to achieve that without any issue. Second thing, today I will not be showing like how you can have a single, uh, you can say instance application. More I will be showing how you can have inter-process communication. So that is the main thing because in web API also we are achieving the same only. We are able to, you can say, have inter-process communication. So now I will be doing through, you can say, memory map file and event viewer. The code of the today's lecture will be available like you just need to mention your email ID in the comments and I will share you the code. Now let us walk through the code and code consists of you can say two application one is this process one and second is this process two both are identical in UI they will both will be communicating with each other in this lecture and there is a class you can say project that is memory map file manager so this is referred in both the projects here you can see in the references so I referred the same project so you just need this uh, it will be you can say providing you how you can uh, like communicate through memory map file now second I will be declaring in both the processes the code will be always identical in both the processes so there is no difference so um, the first is I need an object for you can say communicator that is memory map file communicator then I will be initializing this communicator with an object using constructor where I am passing the file name okay the this file name need to be common in both the processes so that both can be like so this is the file name memory map share or you can have your application name file or something anything and the size you can say size of the file this is like a number of character kind of thing okay now one more thing to be uh, uh, this is you can say a very important part because here you specify what is the read position and what is the write position because this will be the vice versa in the second process now the read position for this process is 2000 then the process 2 will be writing at that position okay and if the write position is here at 0 then the process 2 will be reading at the position 0 because when the both the process are communicating through the same file one should know where one process will be writing so writing position is here 0 and its reading position is 0 here writing position is 2000 and here reading position is 2000 so this is how the process will communicate then we have an e event handler where I have just added this uh, communicator underscore data received event it's simple event only so here what I'm checking uh, what I'm doing is I'm getting the data from the event and assigning it to the text box nothing else so no uh, you can say difficult code is happening and then I'm just opening the communicator okay so this one uh, just related to memory map file second event viewer we will cover it later let me just show you first how this process is working so here now as we have these two processes as you know the f uh, process one will be writing at zero position and this will be reading at zero position so let me just write uh, I am process one and click on this send using memory fire file now as this write on zero position it is reading on the zero position now now if I am writing from here it is writing at 2000 position and this is reading at 2000 position so I can say I am process 2 and when I'm clicking on this send using memory fire file so that this is writing at 2000 position this is reading it from that so let us just do one thing let me just put one you can say breakpoint so that we can walk through the code so here for the sending let me just send something new line okay and when I'm doing this so here I'm sending it through this communicator dot write method 
and passing the text so simple text now the moment text is passed it is called into process one data received event because that is that is reading at that position and just let me just run this so here you see in the process one now the line is there so it's very simple there is no complex code what you need to do is you just need to put your email id in the comment i will be sharing with the code so this was memory map file now the second is event viewer logs now there is a limitation with this memory map file the problem is you can have inter process communication till the time both processes are running under same user account now suppose one of the process is not UI it is a web service or you can say window service so that process is running in the separate process because that window service usually run under system account or NT uh, you can say service accounts now when one process is running under different like system account and your current UI will be running under you can say windows account both cannot have a you can say common memory map file so there will be like no communication be between both the files uh, you can say both the process so how you can overcome is you can overcome through event viewer logs because here you can are ri uh, writing at one particular location from there you can read it easily so memory map file has only one limitation both process should run under same user account okay now let me just walk you through the code of this event uh, you can say uh, viewer logs now this is like common code so I am going through only one process so it's same so for this you need namespace system dot diagnostics and then you just need to initialize whether the source exists or not if it doesn't exist create a source so this is event share so any name you can give you can give your, uh, your application name here the thing is that name will be sh com uh, like same in process 2 also so this is event share so both the side name remain the same and then I have event entry return event so this will be running under separate thread so that's why I have used this in this you can say this log listener I am using so in this method log listener what I am doing is for writing into text box I need this begin invoke to, so that I can write through that thread because this is will be running under separate thread and this is like enable raising event now the there is one problem with uh, event viewer is there is no concept of read or write position so the moment even this process is writing any e you can say any log on the event viewer it will trigger this event just not in process 2 but it, it will trigger the this same event in process 1 as well okay so the problem is we need to make sure like from where that uh, you can say log is coming that's how we will be able to uh, have a communication so how I am doing is like when I am doing you can say I am sending data through this button using send log I am using event log dot write entry and the command I am passing that command itself is uh, you can say that you can say text I am passing the message I am passing will have it will you can say start with process 1 because this is the process 1 and what it will do is the moment it happens it will trigger this log listener event in both the processes in this process in you can say process 2 I am checking whether the text contain process 1 dot colon if it is contain you can say 1 dot colon do something like whatever this because I will be uh, my process will be able to identify like this is coming from the process 1 and vice versa in process 2 in listener I am checking whether the it is coming from the process 2 if it is coming from the process 2 do something with the text or like putting into this one so here the t process 2 will be writing with the you can say preceding prefix process 2 and this will be writing with process uh, you can say 1 so I will be doing the you can say vice versa check and doing action as per that okay let me just ha have an example for this one like process 2 let, let, let us have through process 2 so here process 2 is there and I click on this one so at the moment is this event log happen now process 2 now it will trigger this log listener event in both the case now in this one it didn't happen because log listener we are checking for message process 1 but it is starting with process 2 colon ok so it didn't work now this will be ok so ok I think there we didn't put the you can say breakpoint so let me just remove the breakpoint from here and from here I will just again click on this one now here you see it trigger this listener as well so here the message do contain process 2 now it is just writing into the text box ok so this is how you can have the communication using uh, window task uh, you can say event log viewer also 
into the processes now there is one limitation with this also the thing is this will never works with a guest account so anyhow uh, that is very rare case so no one use the guest accounts for you can say running an application so what uh, that limitation comes with this we event viewer log so let me just go through all the approaches one is web api so if you are running under you can say ui account instead of like windows uh, you can say self hosted service and all then this requires system or admin privileges so now and also handling ui through web api becomes a little bit difficult so you need to come up with your own architecture to do that second goes as memory map files so for inter process communication this is one of the best if you are running both the application under same user account okay the third one goes is event viewer this will work like a charm even uh, both the process are running uh, in a different user account the problem is this doesn't support the guest user so all three have their own drawbacks but with these three approaches you will be able to achieve your inter process communication and will be able to do different things at like with your application other comes is tcp and name pipes which i will be covering in future lecture i may not be covering also but i will be planning uh, soon to cover this also name pipes are little bit complex code because those are supported by code.net as well like 2.0 those kind of versions also so, so that's why the code becomes a little bit complex and also these are like helpful like tcp is helpful when you need to create a chatting app or something like that on a lan or something uh, something like that which you generally don't require when you are just seeing inter process communication okay so i hope you have uh, understood what i uh, like uh, what i went, uh, like uh, what i've showed you the all the codes and all for code you just need to put your email id and the comment i will show you the code for that and also if you have any question you can contact me through my email id that is yogesh.mahalat.gmail.com through my phone number as well and through skype as well okay so if you have any question please feel free to ask me on email id or you can just put your email id in the comment so that i can share you the code keep learning be happy thank you